Welcome back. It's arguably the biggest app with young people out there, TikTok. But could your children's safety be at risk as they scroll on their smartphones? Plus, we've heard about a ban on the app. Jesse Weinberger, Internet Safety and ex Expert host of Big Mama's House podcast, joining us now. How you been? It's been a while. I I've been good. I miss you guys. I know How we miss everybody you too. Been over there. We're doing great. We're managing as best we can, as I'm sure you right. are as well. So let's talk right. about TikTok. Uh, the president came out back on the sixth and said that he wants to ban the app in 45 mm -hmm. days unless it's sold to an American company. So first of all, for those who aren't familiar with TikTok, uh, it's a video sharing app. And and what what are some of the concerns that he has and that you have? Well, the concerns that I have are the same concerns I have about all social media, especially as related to kids. The first big thing is your kids are not supposed to have any social media under the age of 13 because there's a federal guideline called COPA that says they're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you're letting your kids have any social media, including TikTok under 13, that's a no-no. Uh, but TikTok is the same as many others in that it's egregiously hypersexualized. There's way more sexual content on there than you would think, which is not specific to TikTok. That's in general. Um, and just by the way, it's not cute as a parent to let your four or five year old shake their booty to a song on a video. Like just because you don't have malice in your own mind doesn't mean other people don't. So mm -hmm. stop doing that. Uh, but TikTok specifically has location specific content on there. Um, it becomes very easy to find someone, including your children. Uh, so for a lot of those reasons, it's not safe just under the heading of general social media stuff. The fact that TikTok is based in China sort of gives it an additional wrinkle um, because of, you know, the, the, the way that there's really no due process for Americans in China. If China wants the data on individuals, they can just take it and those companies have to provide it. So in that sense, there is a security risk. If an American company does buy it and it's not banned, does that make it any mm -hmm. better? I mean, look at what's happened with American tech companies. How safe do you feel your privacy is on Facebook mm -hmm. or on you know, Twitter or any place else? The only difference will be that due process piece. But unfortunately, my opinion, American tech companies have not really cared about our privacy. They don't really do anything about the fact that there are six-year-olds that have you know, Twitter and Snapchat accounts, and they know that. And there are lots of other apps that are a lot worse than TikTok. So, you know, using TikTok as the example to ban is sort of like knowing that every house on your block has been broken into and we're going to focus on securing the mailbox. <laughs> Should you secure your mailbox? Sure. But that's not solving this other huge problem of data privacy and data risk and data concern, especially when it comes to children. So if kids get of age, if they're 13 and you want them to have social media, how do you manage that as a parent with them so that they are safe? Um, I don't think your kids need to agree with you. Uh, so I think that you make your rules and you set times and you put, you know, parental controls in and that phone goes off at a certain hour. And, you know, we're going to be going back to a lot of online school. That's a lot of hours in front of a screen. So the more you can do to limit the number of minutes they're on, the happier a kid you're going to have. So if TikTok does get banned, what's up and coming uh, with the young kids right now that maybe parents need to keep an eye on? It's not up and coming, but I'm always more worried about YouTube, to be honest. Really? I mean, that's a, you know, it's an old standby, but, you know, there, there's more extreme content. There's more sexualized content. YouTube directly profits from the fact that they're serving up this just egregiously uh, violent and graphic content to kids. YouTube's always my, my go-to. Is Are there new cooties? Always. But to me, YouTube's always the biggest concern. Uh, would you recommend like a parent account, like a, a, like a joint account to kind of help control some of this? For TikTok? Or, or for or YouTube or any of those? Uh, you can't do a joint account on YouTube. Okay. You're either logged in or you're not. Um, but it, especially for littles, I would say they need to be watching near you and they need to have the volume on, no headphones. So at least if you hear something, you can, you can catch it. Jesse Weinberger, our internet safety expert. Great to talk to you, great advice as always. Uh, Jesse recently launched this podcast for parents in schools. It's called Big Mama's House. Uh, give me, you got 30 seconds, tell me a little bit about it. Big Mama's House podcast is uh, me just losing my mind uh, on different things. Uh, related to tech security and for schools as well. So if you're a parent and you feel like you're the only one that's telling your kids no, you're not, come over to Big Mama's House podcast and I will give you lots of t uh, tri ticks, tips and tricks and things that you can do. Smash the phone with a hammer, you know, all those right. good old standbys. Jesse, thanks so much. Great to hear from you. Thanks for the advice too. <laughs> nice to see you. Take care.